Uh, welcome to Brightline Bites Live. My name is Becky. I'm part of the Brightline Eating social media team. And here on Brightline Bites Live, what we do is we help you out with food prep questions, recipes, meal ideas, so that you can get your food out of the way, not have to worry about it, and just gain that peace and automaticity that Brightline Eating is really all about. <clears throat> So let's get started. Today, we are going to be talking about roasting vegetables. And this isn't a specific recipe. This is more of a technique and it's um, really kind of an idea starter. So if you're looking for maybe ways to um, either get started, if you haven't started Bright Line Eating yet, definitely get into the 14 day challenge or jump right into a boot camp. totally life-changing. I myself am a bright liner and a bright lifer, and I've been doing bright line eating for um, about two and a half years now, a little over two years. Um, so uh, this is a technique that I use all the time, especially for my dinners and especially um, during winter, fall, when we're cooking indoors and doing vegetables in the oven. So um, yeah, so we're here for um, all your questions that you have about um, recipes, food ideas, uh, food prep, meal prep. Um, and a lot of people either get, they're just starting out and you need help coming up with ideas for what do I eat for dinner? How do I cook veggies? What kind of veggies do I do? Or um, maybe you just kind of need to shake up your routine a little bit, or maybe you're transitioning now from your summer cooking to your fall cooking and you're starting to cook a little bit more indoors and need some ideas. So this is a technique that I use on Thanksgiving every year. Um, I don't do a lot of the NMF in my house for Thanksgiving. And instead we will typically have, oh, I know a lot of people have been talking about this, so I'm just gonna talk about it for a minute. What do you have for your Thanksgiving dinner? Uh, we eat meat, so we will have a turkey breast. I will probably get some gravy for the people who will eat it. Uh, I won't eat it because gravy usually has a thickener in it, like flour or cornstarch. Um, we'll have some potatoes for the kids, some NMF sides for the kids, and some fruit salad, which I won't eat for dinner, but I will have it the next morning for breakfast. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of roasted veggies. Um, some people do like making a vegetable based stuffing. So like a cauliflower stuffing usually is the base. If you go to brightlineeating.com slash resources, we have a whole section there of recipes. And one of the recipes that's right up at the top um, is a cauliflower stuffing, a vegetable stuffing that um, one of our moderators wrote the, in Brightline Eating official, Christy McCammon wrote this recipe. And it's right there at brightlineeating.com slash resources. You can uh, go and check out that recipe if you're interested in making a cauliflower stuffing. The first year I was doing Brightline Eating, I did try a cauliflower stuffing. It was really good. Uh, but I really just prefer roasted vegetables. So I just rather have a whole bunch of roasted veggies alongside my turkey. And that'll be my Thanksgiving dinner. And then there'll be a little bit of NMF for the other people. If you're new here, NMF means not my food. It's not my food, but there might be other people at my Thanksgiving table who will eat it. So we'll have a little bit of NMF for them to round out their meal and everybody's happy. So what am I gonna show you today? We have a few different types of veggies today. If you've done a boot camp, you've heard Susan Pierce Thompson talk about Wegmans, which is an amazing grocery store. I also live uh, in Western New York and shop at Wegmans. So Wegmans sells a lot of pre-cut veggies, which is super convenient, especially if you're a full-time working mom like myself and you're short on time all of the time. Other people really like to cut up their own vegetables, their own produce. They find it meditative, relaxing, soothing, enjoyable, and that's awesome. Um, I lots of times will buy the pre-cut stuff just because I like the convenience. Um, so I have today some broccoli florets you can buy an entire head of broccoli and you're just gonna wanna cut up the florets and have them, so they're all about the same size. We're also gonna do some cauliflower florets. And I got today these carrots. They're basically just small carrots that are already peeled. 
So you can easily do this if you buy a bunch of carrots or some loose uh, bulk carrots and just peel them and kind of cut them into smaller pieces. You can do this with a bag of baby carrots. My absolute favorite uh, to get is rainbow carrots where you get the purple and the white and the yellow and the um, orange ones all together. Just cut them into uniform sizes. That's the key. Get them into roughly the same size pieces and uh, that way they'll all cook pretty evenly. This week I just happened to have these because my Wegmans was out of rainbow carrots. Uh, and then finally, I also have some radishes. This is one of my favorites. This is something I discovered by accident since I started Brightline Eating. I was at a restaurant and ordered the uh, side of vegetables to supplement my meal. And uh, it was a side of seasonal vegetables. And I said, what's your seasonal vegetable? And they said, it's some roasted root vegetables. And I was like, okay, it was the only vegetable that was available on the menu. And I was like, okay, you know, hopefully there's no potatoes in there. I'll just pick around them. So the vegetables came and there were some beets and stuff. I think there might've been some potatoes that I just kind of pushed aside. And then there was something else in there and I'm, I'm eating them and I'm going, this is really good, but I cannot figure out what this vegetable is. And one of the people who I was at dinner uh, with said, I think those are radishes. And she tasted one and she said, yeah, yeah, those are radishes. They're roasted radishes. Pretty much everybody I've told about it since then has said, it's a what? You can roast radishes? <laughs> they are amazing roasted. Um, all you do is trim off the ends. I'll show you how to do that and throw them in the oven. And the, all the heat uh, goes away when you cook them. And they are just really uh, juicy and tender. And it's such a unique eating experience. Highly recommend giving roasted radishes a try. Now, oftentimes Wegmans will have these pre-cut, but they didn't this week. So I have a bunch of radishes here <laughs> that I've already uh, cut the stems off of. And I have them sitting over here on my scale. Uh, so let's see. The big star with vegetables, when you're roasting vegetables, is what are you going to season them with? You can stay really simple and just do maybe a little bit of salt. I would highly recommend getting yourself a really good quality salt. So a lot of people who maybe are starting Bright Line eating, um, maybe you haven't cooked a lot before. Maybe you haven't cooked for yourself before. So I hope that you find these videos really, really helpful because just some basic techniques. You know, we like to keep our food simple so that we're not, you know, going... Um, one of my friends like to call them brain monkeys, so your brain monkeys don't get going and um, drive you nuts, you know, thinking about recipes and all, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I would say, first of all, one, invest in a good quality knife, a nice sharp knife that you'll be able to use safely. Some good quality sea salt I like to have. This right here is called Malden Salt. Malden is the brand. This is a sea salt from Great Britain. And it has these really big crystals. And this goes nicely in a grinder. And they're pretty soft. They're so soft, you can actually just crumble these right in your fingers. But they have a nice crunch to them, too. So they're super, super delicious on roasted vegetables. Um, another seasoning that I like to use a lot, because I love garlic is just like a garlic herb seasoning. Now be careful with this. This one has just sea salt, garlic, basil, rosemary, black pepper, and nutmeg in it. I have used a lot of other brands that are really awesome, just kind of a garlic salt blend. Um, I did buy one one time, a brand that I don't usually use, got it home, wanted to use it, looked at the ingredients and saw the sugar was like the second or third ingredient. Didn't use that one. Um, I've got some oregano. I've got some garlic powder. I've got some rosemary is delightful on carrots. A lot of people in our community love everything but the bagel. I believe it was, whoop, backwards, Trader Joe's, I think, is who kind of pioneered this seasoning. It's all the stuff that you would get on an everything bagel without the bagel. So there's salt, onion, garlic, and uh, puppy seeds sesame seeds. So that's a tasty seasoning with um, quite a bit of variety in it. I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, these are called lightly dried herbs. Um, they're 
not quite fresh, but not quite dried. They come in the produce section of my grocery store. They're kind of a nice, uh, nice thing to have um, because it's because it lasts longer than a fresh herb, but isn't completely dried and preserved like a dried herb. Also, some other just like um, I have these uh, flavored salts from Beautiful Briny Sea that will give just a little bit of a different flavor profile. Um, it's sea salt with some spices blended in. So it may add a little bit of um, flavoring to your roasted vegetables. This one's a Greek one, this one's a uh, smoky one, this one's a spicy one. So just check your ingredients. Check your ingredients, make sure that there's no uh, sugar in there, and also make sure that there's no um, thickener like a, a tapioca or a cornstarch or something like that. So um, one final thing I will say, which I'll show you this later, cinnamon on roasted carrots is amazing. Um, my kids love it. A little, if you use a little bit of butter for your fat and then some cinnamon, super delicious and the kids love it. So let's get started. Um, what I'm gonna do is I've got a pan here. Now you can just totally throw your vegetables. This happens to be a stoneware pan, nice and seasoned as you can see. <laughs> seasoned meaning well used. Um, you can throw your vegetables right onto a pan. My favorite pan, which I already have in the oven because I've already cooked some veggies this morning to show you what they're gonna look like when they're done, is just a really dark cookie sheet. Um, but you can just dump these right out. As I said, you're gonna want them all about the same size. So if you have any bigger ones in here, you can break them up or cut them up if you need to. Cut off a couple of stalks here. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is your yield of your vegetables. Once you cook this, how much is it going to yield? That's something that you might need to get a feel for. This is a big hunk of cauliflower. I'm going to cut that up. That's something that you might need to kind of get a feel for. I found that now at dinner time, you get six ounces of veggies and eight ounces of salad or you can combine that and have just 14 ounces of vegetables in total. Um, I have found that um, I will buy a big three pound bag of broccoli florets and that will yield just about 28 ounces of cooked broccoli when it's done. I'm going to stretch this out here for my cutting board and trim up these radishes. So the broccoli will reduce by about, that's um, 40%. You're getting a 60% yield going from, I'm just cutting off. I've already taken the stems off and scrubbed these. And now I'm just cutting off the tips on both ends. The little, this little tip and the stems here. So you're left with kind of this little sort of cylinder. These are pretty small radishes. I've had bigger ones that I would then also cut in half just so that they would cook evenly all the way through. Um, so with broccoli florets, you're going to get about a 60% yield of whatever you put in. The cooked um, weight will be about 60% of what you had put in. I haven't... Um, I haven't really, the only reason I know that is because my husband and I will both measure up 14 ounces of broccoli after we've cooked a three pound bag because they come in a three pound bag in our store. And we will weigh out our two 14 ounce portions and that will be pretty much all that there is. There might be a couple pieces left over on the pan. I would definitely suggest uh, testing that out for yourself. You know, weigh it beforehand or take a look at your bag and uh, weigh it afterwards. Or just the more you do this, you'll get a good sense for how much um, raw veggies will yield cooked. Roasting veggies like this, you can see I'm just putting these all on one big pan. Roasting veggies like this can definitely be done in batches. Roast them up and then... Um, you can keep those in the fridge and have 
cooked veggies. It's Christmas colors. How cute is that? I didn't even realize. Um, then you'll have cooked veggies all set to go in your fridge for, you know, a couple of days. So you might not need to worry about how much it's going to yield unless you just want to do the planning. Now, just for um, to experiment with this yield question, I weighed these radishes with the stems and the tips. It was 6.6 .6 ounces. Uh, that was one bunch of radishes. Um, I have another bunch in the oven. I'll weigh them when I take them out and see what they weigh. Now, you can leave these like this. You can season them. You can uh, account for your fat and put a little bit of oil on them. Um, I have some oil here that I've weighed out. I also have, this is a pastry brush. I have a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here. Um, you're gonna want to, this is why knowing your yield would be important. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on these. Knowing your yield would be important because if I know that this is two ounce, or I'm sorry, two servings, to let's say two, let's say this comes out to two six ounce servings of vegetables or maybe three six ounce servings of vegetables um then i know that i can use the appropriate amount of fat on them and just weigh it out in your little dish beforehand and then you can put it on here a lot of people do it without any uh fat on them and that's totally fine as well my absolute favorite to go in on these with is the garlic and the salt seasoning. This one happens to be the Wegmans brand. There's another one I've used in the past that's called Bittersweet Herb Farm, that's yummy. Um, I'm sure a lot of different ones are available. Um, I'm also gonna put a little bit of these fresh herbs on here. Just sprinkle those around. It looks really pretty with these on there as well. So there's one tray of veggies and uh, I'm gonna pop this into the oven at 375 for about 40 minutes. You might wanna check it after half an hour, see how they're doing, but I'm just gonna put this in the oven just like this for about 40 minutes. Maybe once during the cooking, I'll take it out and kind of stir them around a little bit um, because when you're roasting veggies, and I like to get them so that they are a little bit crispy, they have a little bit of um, brownness on them. And depending on your pan, they'll get that way on top. I'm going to put them right into the middle of the oven. And they also, depending on your pan, might get that way on the bottom, on the surface of the pan. Um, you can kind of shake these up a little bit. Sometimes I will put them in a dish beforehand and stir them up with the seasonings and then dump them on here. Sometimes I don't want to get another bowl dirty, so I just do it this way, and it, it works pretty well. So what I'll do is just pop this into the oven at 375 for about about 40 minutes. Now let's take a look at our carrots. Let me grab another pan. Dump those carrots on there. The carrots really can totally just be cooked like this, um, especially if you do want to put butter and cinnamon on them later. Uh, you'll want to just do them like this, or you could put a little oil on them now and then put the cinnamon on later. Or they're also really good with the garlic and herb seasoning, rosemary, like I said. Um, I'm going to do these ones with cinnamon so that um, my kids will like those later tonight. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to brush them. I know these ones will be for my kids. I'll just brush a little bit of olive oil on here. And now carrots uh, take a little bit longer than those other veggies to roast. Um, you're either gonna want to increase the heat to 400 and cook them for half an hour to 45 minutes or if you keep them at 375. Um, all my other veggies this morning cooked at 375 in 45 minutes. The carrots took about another 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes. So I'd say after a half an hour, just kind of keep an eye on them, especially, um, you know, depending on your oven, if your oven, you know, runs true to temperature or not, um, you might just want to keep an eye on them so that you know how long they'll take for your oven, your 
elevation can sometimes affect that. So now I'm going to push my veggies out that I cooked this morning. <laughs> when the radish, when the little bitty radish is cooked down, they look so they look so little. But these are, did you see, did you see that just squirt out like that? Look how yummy this looks. Browned on the bottom. This is nice and moist inside. It's it's so unique. Definitely try these. So these are our radishes. Let's see. Let's see what they weigh. Just out of curiosity. So my other bunch was where's my spatula? My other bunch was six point six ounces. before I put it in the oven. This bunch was about the same size, so I'd imagine it probably weighed about the same. And this now weighs 1.2 ounces. So veggies cook down a lot. And you definitely want to weigh your portion after it's been cooked. You weigh it the way that you're gonna eat it. How do you know when your veggies are done? You want them to be fork tender, it's called. So it's when you can easily push a fork in. That's all that means. You can easily push a fork in. And you can see how these um, have a little bit of this like blackened bit on them here. And the broccoli too, it gets a little bit crunchy on the edges. That's just so tasty. Oh, let me get it over this way. There you go. Just a little bit crispy. It's just such a nice texture. The, the body of the vegetable there is like fork tender but then there's a little bit of crispiness around the edge. It's so good. And then these <laughs> poor wee little radishes, usually during the summer you get much bigger radishes, but they're gonna be delicious no matter what. I'm gonna set these aside. And I'm going to show you my carrots. Here are. Carrots. I did these ones on a stoneware dish. You can do stoneware, you can do metal, you can do them in a glass baking dish as well. Um, so now, let's see, this was, I mean, these come in pre weighed bags. This was an eight ounce bag of carrots. Eight ounce bag of carrots weighs 3.1 ounces. So there you go. Now we know. And now, as I said, you could put a little bit of butter on these. I had brushed a little bit of oil on them beforehand. You just want to account for that as your fat and your meal. I had put a little oil on these before I cooked them. So then if you just put a little bit of cinnamon on, And toss them around in the cinnamon. It's really, really good. My son in particular, he's nine. He loves carrots this way. He would also put some NMF, pour a little NMF on them. It goes well with the cinnamon. Sometimes he does that. That's all good. That's how you cook for a family. You make one thing that then everybody at the table can either take or leave or customize to their liking. It's all good. Uh, so there's some cinnamon carrots. Let's see, what else do we have? I think that's it for today. I think that is it. Yeah, just looking around here at my counter and all my food. <laughs> I'm really excited because now I have all these vegetables ready to roll for dinner tonight. We are going to be eating good tonight. So let me turn this off. I'm gonna hop over into the comment feed and see if anybody has any questions. And thank you for joining me. Everybody have a great, lovely, bright Monday. Bye.